welcome him with a big round of applause. That's uh, for the presentation. Okay, that's it. Okay, uh, first of all, today I'm going to talk a little bit about this improving network observability with telemetry using GNMIC in Prometheus. But it's important for us to remember the concepts behind these tools and to understand better. Let us check first what is telemetry. So the main idea of telemetry became uh, the data collection and processing and displaying this information. So basically we have a centralized tool that is able to collect data from our extremities, from the limits of our systems or barriers. We are able to process this information. We are able to enrich this data in a pattern or in a way that we can then read this information or utilize this to display or to create any other form of information. This, uh, this concept of telemetry is also involved in tools and systems that use real-time or something like really close to real-time. And today is really applying in some latency required systems. For example, uh, space stations, we are talking about agriculture machines, we are talking about race cars, we are talking about everything that is sensible to latency. And it's also became relevant in the network concept, which is the area that we are working here, because we need to bring this as a way to reinforce SLAs, we need to bring this as a way to optimize our network, to understand better what is happening. We need a way to take this information from our endpoints and show this in a way that our customers or our internal teams can use this. Uh, in 2022, we have the first RFC that defines a framework to work with the ideas of telemetry. And in this framework, I recommend you all, if you're interested in telemetry, give a read. It's really simple, but really complete. Uh, it defines some topics that are really important for us to understand what we are going to handle here today. It defines topics like uh, why it's important to use telemetry and which scenarios I'm going to cover using these tools as well. So, but how can I take this, what I'm showing here, these concepts, this RFC, how can I take this and put this into practice? So that's the, the subject of this presentation. That's what I'm going to show here today. It's how can I take this telemetry and put this in our systems. So the tools that we are going to use is GNMIC. GNMIC is a GNMI client. It was first made by Nokia, but currently owned by OpenConfig. It uses RPC over HTTPS, so we are talking about something that has TCP, and uh, with that we have ensured that the packets are getting to our destination. We have a way to ensure that the information is getting there. It, it also works in real time. We're going to get into this later. Once GNMIC is collecting the data from our endpoints, we need to start this. And to start this type of information, we are talking about databases that have to be able to support a large scale of data and also at the same time need to be able to support this in a faster way. So to this we are going to use Prometheus, at least this is the subject, but you can also use Influx, you can use OpenTSDB, and you can use tools of your preference. But in this case, I'm going to use Prometheus because Prometheus is not able just to store this information but we can also use another tool related to the Prometheus that's called Alert Manager, is able to create alerts for us. And once we have the data collected, we have this data storage in the database, and we have this information being handled by our users, we need to display this somehow, and to display this information, we are going to use Grafana, okay? So, this is an example of a telemetry stack. What do we need to reach the telemetry monitoring on our networks? Of course, we need the devices to collect this information. We need the system to collect this data. So the devices generate the information, GNMI collect this data. And we need the TSDB or timestamp series database to save this information in a way that we can use this later. We can use an alert generator, this is optional, but in this case, we are going to use because the main idea of this presentation is show a way to monitor the devices and create alarms from it. And 
By the end, we also need a way to show this information that we are going to use Grafana, okay? So, let's start taking this stack and I'm going to break it in parts so we can see how can we configure this by parts, okay? In the device, the configuration is very simple. You just need to allow gRPC. Uh, I put the configuration on the Juniper and Cisco that I most use to work with, but you can also do this in Howie. I think it's in system view gRPC. And once you have allowed this, allow the port, set the configuration, and of course allow this in your policy, your device is able to listen to the configuration. You also need to pass a user, but in this case, I'm going to use a dummy user just to make the connections and show the examples. So once we have a user configured, a port set up on gRPC with gRPC enable and gRPC enable in your policy, we are now able to use our router to generate this information for our systems. The next step is to configure the GNMIC. Uh, GNMIC, we can break down in four parts. The first part, we're going to specify the target, which means that we are going to set the devices, the information of the devices, the port, username, and everything related to the device first, which means the SS information. Once the information has been collected, we need to specify the subscriptions. This is the most interesting part of the telemetry itself. When we are talking about data collection, we are talking about reading paths. Instead of SNMP that we have the OIDs, in telemetry we have paths. These paths are made, uh, the documentation is available on your fabricant. And this path specifies what type of data or which path I'm going to use to get this type of data. I'm going to show this a little bit more detail in the example. We also specify the modes that we want to get this information. With gRPC, we are able to set information, we are able to get information, and we are able to subscribe information. And the most interesting of these methods is the subscribe method, which allows us to get this information from the device, which means the device creates this information for us. We don't need to pull the device. So we can use GNMI to specify the paths that we want to take this information. We use GNMI to specify which type of information do we want, and we can specify how can we get this information, okay? Also, within the subscription, we need to specify the output, which will be our database in this case. In the database, we need to specify the parameters, and by the end, there is another more important part, which is the processors that allow us to change the data. I'm going to show this more detail in the example right now. So, this is an example. Let us start by the first quadrant here, which is the target. In this, in this example, I'm using a Cisco on the sandbox environment of Cisco, of course. And here, I'm taking the information of the address, which means the way I'm going to access it. I'm passing a username and a password. In this example, username is passed by uh, environment variable, which means in this case, I'm using a very similar to a YAML file configuration file, which you can use to then pass this information to your GNMI client. So we have the targets where you specify the device and the way to access it. We have the subscriptions within the subscriptions. You can set the paths inside this path area. The paths are available in your vendor, so you can choose the paths that you want to see. You can choose the type, which means the mode that I want to see. In this case, I want to see string because here I am taking information from the interface. So I want to see when the interface goes down. I want to see when the protocol goes down. I want to see when the interface goes up and I want to see everything related to this. But inside this part of subscription, we can have multiple paths and these multiple paths will collect different types of data, okay? We also specify here the output. The output is going to be Sorry, the output is where I'm going to save this information. In this case, I am saving this information in output on Prometheus. So, there are th things important on the output. The first of all is the string as label. With this parameter, some data from the interface that came as a string, for example, description, part state, those are strings. And by default, these are not going to be saved on the database. 
So I need a way to restore this information so I can use this later. And that's why we need the string as label as well. And by the end, of course, we have the processor that we are going to use to change this information. This is an example after we pass to the configuration of the device. And right now we pass to the configuration of the GNMIC. This is an example of information that I'm collecting. Remember that this information comes in real time. So if I change the state of the port, I got a new package just like this, and I need to process this data. As you can see here, we have the state of the interface for and the admin state of this interface is up. So this is the example of the configuration of the Prometheus. It's very simple. In this example, I'm taking, I'm scrapping the GNMIC in intervals of one second just to get this data. I'm using, in this case, Prometheus with intervals of scrapping because I need to check, for example, if this interface went up and down more times within this period. So, for example, I want to see if it went down like for maybe five times or three times is enough just to adapt this so this doesn't become a port down but a problem in the port itself because I'm seeing flaps on the port and not the port down. Okay? But there is a problem with this. Once I collect the data, as we can see here, the same interface where interface name is for, we have the same state as down and we have the same state as up, which means our TSDB is not able to store string data. Do you remember the tag that we put earlier? So this tag is what's showing this here. So how can we work with this information? The way that is shown here, it's basically not that useful, not to say useless, but this is not that useful for us. So we need a way to get the data that we collect, enrich and process this data to be shown here. So this is basically the explanation. Some states and protocols, for example, give us strings, and we need to work with these strings. We need to, to work with these metrics, to adapt these metrics, to, think, to make standards of these metrics so we can use this on our software later. Okay? So, to this, we are going to use the processor. So, the processors allow us to transform these messages. And you can have multiple processors under the tag processors before, where we can add personalized tags and personalized values according to the order that you need or the values that you need to change or the values that you need to work with them. We can change these metrics and we can transform these on int values. So we are not working with interface down or up, we are working with one and zeros or perhaps our number. And you cannot use just for this, so for this transformation, but you can use to create aggregate value. For example, if you see a logical interface goes down, if a physical interface goes down at the same time, we can create something on the processor that is able to take the information from the physical interface, correlate this information with our logical interface, and show this as one single event because they are related. So that's not a way just to enrich the data, but to ensure that we are, what we are seeing is what is happening in a, in a more cleaner way. Okay? This is an example of the processor. Uh, basically, we could take all this part and put inside the processor part. Here, what I'm doing is, I'm taking the state of the interface that was up and down as a string, and now I'm making this become a value. So, when the interface operational state is up, I'm going to see a one. When the interface operational state is down, I'm going to see a zero. And when I have the admin state as down, and the upper state as down, I'm going to see a minus one. As you can see here, we are talking about creating personalized values. We are talking about making these tags values that we can use to work with them and to display this information the way that we want to see them. This is an example of the formatted output. As you can see here, we have one for each interface. And of course, we have this personalized ones and zeros and minus one. But this is not the way that we want to see or show, but this is good enough for us to work and create our first eyelash rules. Because the idea of this presentation is to show a way or a mean to start this on your network with simple events and simple correlation. Right now, I'm going to show you a little bit of the alert manager. 
So, Alert Manager is an integration of the Prometheus that allows us to take those values that is stored in the Prometheus. This is uh, data already stored in Prometheus after we change this information. So the information has been processed and is stored in the database. Right now I'm going to retrieve this data and create alarm. So this can be sent on uh, Slack, on Telegram, WhatsApp, uh, can be displayed to your, your NOC team, can be displayed to your SOC team, can be sent to your network engineer, can be shown to whoever you want this to show this. So Alert Manager allows us to take this information from Prometheus and create conditionals. When these conditionals are met, we can see one alarm sent, we can see an event sent, we can see this in another endpoint. Uh, this is an example where I take the port down or the port state, and I create another one to show the, just the CRC errors. Uh, the port down basically will check if the state of the port is down on the interface, and it's going to send a message for me. Uh, this message is going to be shown only the, the alert manager because I didn't specify endpoints. But here we can see, for example, the first step of creating alarm using the data that is stored in the Prometheus, okay? Okay, so remember that we have those one and zeros before. If we take this information, we can make things more uh, attractive to our teams that are going to work with them. So for this, we can use the Grafana output, which is basically take the information which are numbers on the Prometheus and make this becomes a better screen. We can create graphs, you can create tables, you can create uh, inside the limits of the Grafana, any dashboard that you want to use. You can see the data there. You can work with the data using the Grafana, we can work with the data using the Alert Manager, okay? So, but let us get to the end point. Why should I go through all this work to have this implemented on my network? Well, one of the advantages that GNMIC provides a better, let's say, a better way to handle the situation than SNMP. When we're talking about GNMIC, we're talking about the uh, software that is able to get the information from an endpoint. So our endpoint is generating this data and send this information to a server we, where we can take this as pool, we can take this as symbol, we can take this in a limit of time, we can take this on changes, for example. We are taking this information from our endpoints sending this information to our server, and inside the server, we're able to work with that. With SNMP, we need to create pool times. These pool times are going to uh, use a lot of processors because we are sending a SNMP book on our devices. So a lot of requests every time, I think it's five times, five minutes the default time. So every five minutes, we are sending a lot of SNMP requests, and sometimes you don't want to see this information. Why should I send, for example, uh, OIDs of PPOE for a device that is not a BNG. Why should I send SNMP OIDs from the device that I don't really need to see this data? And another part that is really important, why am I waiting five minutes to see an event on my network? Because we are, se we are selling latency, we are selling better connectivity, we are selling high speed. We cannot be waiting for five minutes to see something happen on a network. We need to see this now. We need to, to, the customer needs to feel that we know what is happening before he can feel this on his network. The customer must know that we are working on solving the issue before he is being affected. So the advantages are, of course, the real-time monitoring because we are taking this information real-time. This is much easier to scale. We are talking about deploying thousand servers connected because GNMIC also can be worked with clusters. We are talking about a few advantages when compared also to another tools of, for example, syslog or where you have some limited triggers. We are talking about better connectivity. We are talking about uh, a lot of advantages of this. And of course, uh, the only problem or the main reason I think it's not that popular yet, it's because only newer versions or new devices are, have the, the gRPC capabilities enabled by default. So 
it's, you cannot use this on legacy device, for example. So only newer versions, I think, from three, perhaps four years ago, are capable to insert gRPC by default. Okay. And another good point that I would like to add is when we are comparing GNMIC with SNP traps, for example. SNP traps work with SNP that works with UDP before. So what happens if you lose the package of a trap? You end up not seeing the event. So to ensure that you are seeing everything, you need to have SNP traps and you need to have uh, NMS with SNP as well. And so you basically have the trouble to how to configure the trap and you have the trouble to configure the NMS device and everything just to collect this information in something that we can deploy this using GNMI and get this information way faster, way more trustable way because we're talking about GNMIC with TCP, HTTPS. And you have real-time monitoring, it's less CPU intensive, you can personalize it, and of course, you can reinforce your SLAs. We're talking about seeing the things before the customers, so we can treat this faster, we can make this in a better way. Uh, GNMI is growing fast. We are seeing at least more people in the community come to, the, to, come to here working with telemetry. We are seeing people bring these to the workshops. I think I saw two, uh, one yesterday, where we talk about, uh, I think it was security, and he was talking about GNMI, he was talking about gRPC and how gRPC works. And of course, when we are talking about monitoring networks, we are not talking about only seeing events on the network. And it's important to understand that it's going to fit better with a flow capability like King Chick, because GNMIC helps you understand who is generating helps understand what is generating impact on your network. And with a flow you can understand better who. So using an IS flow technology with telemetry, you can have a really complete solution that is not able just to see the events, but to identify what is happening in real time. And there is one more advantage that I didn't put here because the, the term is a little bit short, but I'm going to just talk about it. Uh, GNMIC also has another capability, which are the actions. We can use GNMIC also to set commands on your device. So once I detect the, an event on my network, I can also use the same software with the same structure, for example, to send a comment to my device. My interface went down. Well, I can bounce the interface and see if it went up again. It won't cost nothing. The interface is already down. So we can add this also to the tool where we can create a more complete and more and less complex solution, okay? I think that's it, uh, please. Well, thank you. We want to thank our speaker. Any other questions? English, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Alguna pregunta, por favor, al micrófono. Tenemos espacio para dos. If you have any questions, we have time for two or three questions. First, uh, identify yourselves. Give your name and uh, yes. Good afternoon. I'm Jason Carson from Panama. I have a question. I work quite a lot with other types of monitoring systems, and one of the largest advantages is that they have agents. There are agents that you can install in other devices that may not be compatible with yours. So do, does your service also offer something similar? Generating the information, so our endpoints are going to generate. We can deploy this at cluster, so we can have, for example, not an agent, but a server installed closer to your device, and this server collects this information for you, sent to the mainstream, for example. But we don't need to install anything on the, the agent or anything on the endpoint. So, as you said, it's quite scalable if I have a larger uh, network when I have multiple uh, machines that cannot are not supported. For instance, you said that the newest uh, machines. Is there any way I can use the machines in the network that don't have that capability? 
of the stack that I was showing, you can use the Prometheus mm -hmm. with, uh, let me remember the name. Uh, we have an uh, extension of the Prometheus that allow us to collect SNMP data, for example. But if your device does not generate gRPC, we cannot really use telemetry for this type of telemetry on the device, okay? So we have to integrate this with SNMP and create a solution that's going to collect SNMP from devices that is not able to support gRPC. And it's going to collect gRPC from devices that has gRPC enabled by default. Okay. okay, thank you very much. No problem. Thanks for your question. Rafael Ganassin, da Mid for It. Parabéns pela apresentação. Obrigado. Danilo, você pode. Thank you for your presentation. Could you explore and explain data compilation, statistical data compilation, and the counters that are usually altered? I will respond this in Portuguese since the question was asked in Portuguese. We have multiple ways for data collection, and sometimes it's uh, what well, we use and there are some changes or modifications and we can use simple as you said. If we are on the packets, it's... Uh, Utiliza sample, só que a gente pode definir o intervalo da sample. Então, poderemos ter samples de dois minutos, de um minuto, de 40 segundos, às vezes é uma interface mais sensível. Aí você cria... Dentro daquela parte do subscription, você cria um subscription específico para aquela interface que você vai coletar dados, por exemplo, a cada 40 segundos, porque é uma interface muito importante. Mas, às vezes, a gente está falando de um cliente, PPOE, e eu posso coletar dados a cada 5, 10, 15 minutos, talvez. Então, a gente tem essa granularidade de poder adaptar o nosso sistema de acordo com o que a gente vai fazendo. Okay? Perfeito, obrigado. Eu que agradeço. Obrigado pela pergunta. So, we can adapt the... Sí, sí. Eh, bueno, no tenemos. Well, we have no further questions. No questions online. So Danilo will be here. So if there are questions, you can reach out to him during the break. Gracias. Muchas gracias por su presentación. Bueno.